G'day ladies and gentlemen, this is Voyager the Second here. Today we are back with another episode of New South Wales Public Transport Showcases. In today's episode, we are going to look in detail at a new metro line for the northern suburbs of Sydney and the southeastern suburbs of Sydney, mainly along Victoria Road and Anzac Parade. It will connect the two largest cities in Greater Sydney of Parramatta and the Sydney CBD. And it will extend to Maroubra and La Perouse in the southeast. Now the reason I chose Victoria Road rather than going on through the inner west is that there are more suburbs along Victoria Road where buses and automobiles are the only modes of transport rather than just using Olympic Park as more important than anything else. The purpose of this project is not mainly to reduce travel times, but the project will deliver better transport options in existing communities and grow existing communities, with the purpose of making Sydney a more compact, pedestrian friendly city, and also creating communities where you don't have to drive around with your car and then you, you gotta go miles and miles out of your house to just get the groceries or even get to work. You can just travel to work or buy your facets less than 20 minutes away from your home. It would also reduce congestion on Victoria Road. The metro will will be double track and it will feature it will be standard double track, standard gauge double track and it's going to be 39 kilometers long from Parramatta to Little Bay via Victoria Road, the CBD and Anzac Parade. And there's also a 500 meter extension from Little Bay to La Perouse where there's going to be a maintenance facility. And the twin tunnels which are coated in yellow right here are going to be 32 kilometers from Kingsford to Parramatta. Six tunnel boring machines will be drilling. One starting from top right to Parramatta, one starting from Roselle to top right, and one starting from Kingsford to Roselle. From Kingsford, the metro would be elevated for 7 kilometers as a sky train to Little Bay and even all the way up to the maintenance facility. There is a colour coding s scheme shown in this showcase. A station whose names are highlighted in magenta are stations with the potential to be renamed so that we just don't bear the old ugly boring street name for the lines yellow as I said it means it's tunnel turquoise means it's sky train stations in green are underground stations royal blue stations are elevated and stations in purple are open cut stations where tunnel boring machines will begin their drilling and will begin and will terminate at the same time. They will terminate their machine work at the same stations, with Parramatta being the exception from top right to Parramatta for the two tunnel boring machines. There is also a bonus feature in this metro line that I will offer, but I will not mention it until later in this video. So without further ado, let's begin this showcase from Parramatta. From Parramatta, um, at Parramatta Station would be located on the northern side of Hassal Street between Charles and Station Streets and the station would be built underground maybe it might be open cut to help aid in the, the disassembling of the tunnel boring machines from Ride to Parramatta. It will serve the streets of downtown Parramatta and provide growth in the inner city of Parramatta and the metro would strengthen Parramatta's use as Sydney's second CBD. From Parramatta, the line would go in tunnel, head north under the Parramatta River, and join Victoria Road with a station just north of Victoria Road on the northern side of Victoria Road called Brabine Street, where it will where the station is located in the intersections of Brabine Street and Victoria Road. And it will be renamed to so it doesn't bear the ugly street name. And it would serve the neighborhood north of the Parramatta River. And it would aid in transport coverage and with a potential for future growth. Due east is Rydalmere, which would be on the eastern side of James Roos Drive. I'll show it to you right now that it is James Roos Drive. It, there's the name there, you should see it and it would be located north of Victoria Road and Western Sydney University Parramatta campus. 
and it will greatly serve the campus. There is a train station nearby, I will show it to you right now. It's on the Carlingford line. It's it, it is it's called Rydalmere Station as well. It serves the University of Western Sydney campus, but really its transport coverage is really crap. Well, not really and the transport coverage, but the services are really crap and you only have a train passing by every hour. And that's about it that the, the Carlingford line offers. And so if you have the new metro line, it's going to serve the university very well. And it would also serve some of the industrial area west of Subiaco Creek. Park Road is the, the next station on the line. It would be located west of Park Road. I'll show it to you again right here and it would be north of Victoria Road. It, during construction, it will have to eat up a, a bit of Myrtle Street and acquire some properties to make way for the, for the line. But the station would serve the industrial and commercial area of Rydalmere. This is actually a commercial area. There is like a big, there is Bunnings Warehouse right here. It would also deliver new homes, retail and jobs around the area. There's going to be another station at Ermington, which would be built east of Silverwater Road. Some people don't want that station built, especially my rail fans' friends, because uh, I've, what I've heard from them is that there's someone they don't like who lives in Ermington. The area around the station would give birth to apartments and office buildings between 5 and 30 stories high, with buildings having a 1 in 2 chance of retail on the ground floor of each building. That way people who live and work, as I said, they live and work, these buildings, no need to drive a, a car several minutes to buy groceries, but instead they just buy their living facets downstairs, their facets of living downstairs. Now Silverwater Road, between Victoria Road and Rawson Street near Auburn, this is Rawson Street right here, and then between, between these two, one lane will have to be removed from the roads to make way for cyclists so that they can have their share of Silverwater Road and cycle to wor work safely without being interrupted by unruly motorists. There will be another station at Marsden Road, but will need to be renamed, of course. And, and, and speaking, not really, but with every station, there's going to be 500 cycling racks a minimum of 500 cycling racks in each station and anyone who parks their bicycle at these stations do not need to pay a parking fee whatsoever. So traveling both by bicycle and public transport will benefit the individual's finances. The next stop on this line is West Ride Station. The station will serve as an interchange between the Metro and the rest of the Sydney Railway Network. Trips from West Ride to the city will now be 10 minutes shorter on the metro and rather than travelling to the city via Strathfield. And also the faster journey times will apply between Re West Ride and Parramatta. Traveling and you have direct trips from West Ride to Parramatta without changing trains at Strathfield. Faster journey times also will apply and it will open up public transport improve public transport connections between Sydney's northern suburbs and western suburbs. The, t the stop following West Ride is Top Ride, which is named after the shopping centre. The station is slightly further away to the southeast of the mall, which is right here, and it would be an open cut station where two tunnel boring machines will drill to Parramatta and two tunnel boring machines terminate their work from Roselle. Top Ride Shopping Centre is a major shopping centre without good public transport options, with the exception of buses. But if we implement a metro next to Top Ride, businesses, both great and small, can earn good amount of profit from passengers who use the station and then get out. And then there's also going to be high-rise apartments and offices around the station to solve the affordability housing crisis in Sydney. Enterprise Park is the next stop on this line and people who work around the precinct, especially on the industrial area, can use the metro to commute here and at the same time, high-rise apartments and offices will emerge around the station, just like Ermington and all other stations. Gladesville is the next station here. 
There are plenty of houses and shops along this strip of Victoria Road, so the station can make use of the area, but they also need to be demolished for high-rise development. Huntley's Point is the next station on this line, and its primary purpose will be to serve an all-girls school of, of Riverside. Uh, shout, comment on the on your on me video if if you work on this school here, but it will also serve the ferry wharf in Huntley's Point, and and also it would work as a good transport interchange and the Huntley's Point Wharf would be upgraded to serve more passengers as well. However, the problem of putting a metro station mostly to serve an all-girls school is that there could be a lot more assaults of a lot more inc incidents of pedophilia and other sexual incidents around the school. And so that could be the, the negative of putting it at next to an all-girls school. Anyway, it will dive underneath Parramatta River before we reach Dremoyne Station. Now, Dremoyne is an important station because it serves the entire a massive peninsula. It serves a massive peninsula even as far south as Five Dock. And because it can serve a great to area, I plan to implement segregated cycling lanes on existing roads around the peninsula so that people can make use of the station while taking their bikes and it's also good exercise there's also going to be plenty of high-rise development so it's going to make pedestrian and with the upgraded roads for pedestrians it's going to make Dremoyne a pedestrian friendly suburb it will go underneath Iron Cove near the Iron Cove bridge and then we're going to have stops at both Roselle and Balmain. Roselle having the purpose of starting a new tunnel board of drilling new tunnels towards Top Ride and also it's going to be the same spot where tunneling finishes from Kingsford. And Balmain would be there just for the sake of coverage but there's also plenty of houses and then there's two ferry wharves that aren't too far from it. That aren't too far from the metro station I mean. Anyway, the metro will dive underneath the northern part of Darling Harbour, go under Headland Park, and then it would make a stop at Barangaroo in the same location as the new metro station for Sydney Metro, for the new for the under the Sydney Metro which is under construction. But the western metro line will go through the western side of the city, mostly parallel to Sussex Street. There will be a stop at Tumbalong Park to serve the cultural hub of Darling Harbour and it would also be closer to Darling Harbour than other stations in the city like Town Hall. It is important as well that we have a stop at Central Station where passengers can change for light rail, suburban, intercity and interstate railway services right across Sydney, New South Wales and even Australia. The next station on this line is Zetland. We just keep going south. There's Zetland right there, where high and around Zetland, high rise is already being built, and it would also provide a closer option than the Green Square station. But here's a catch. Here, here's something nice. Both Zetland and Green Square stations will be connected, despite the stations sharing different names. You can go directly from Zetland. You can change trains from Zetland and Green Square without having to tap off and tap on again at another station. But we will build we need to build a pedestrian tunnel to provide that it would happen. And there's and in the pedestrian tunnel there's also going to be travelators to speed up the travel. And it's going to allow quick transfer between trains. The following station after Zetland is East Lakes, which is also has the potential to transform ugly, no offence, suburban streets into a thriving community. This is the last underground station in this showcase before the metro emerges into on ground level and but the line will continue underground before it will emerge and reveal itself to the ground and there would be a station at Kingsford which would be an open cut station like Bella Vista and two tunnel boring machines will begin their drilling all the way to Roselle. The metro would rise up on the center of Anzac Parade before it and then it would continue as a viaduct all the way 
to the terminus of Little Bay and the La Perouse Maintenance Centre. Now there's a stop at Marubra and it's very important because it serves a large community and it would also have the potential to be transformed into an even bigger community with high rise around the station with 10 stories or higher at least 500 within 500 meters reach of the station. The Metro will continue along Anzac Parade with another stop at Beecham Road which is located on the northern part which is located north of the intersections of Beecham Road and Anzac Parade. The Metro would continue running along the center of Anzac Parade but would be straighter than the Anzac Parade so that it can maintain the higher speeds. Speaking of speeds though, the top speed of the Metro would be 100 kil kilometers an hour. Now the next stop is Malabar and the streets especially on the western side of Malabar are well designed for high-rise development so the streets don't need to be redesigned. Well maybe the eastern, southeastern side needs to be redesigned. Now after Malabar the next and final stop on this line is Little Bay. There is a bit of residential development around Little Bay and this is where all trains will terminate. Now there's going to be a rail depot and maintenance center which is highlighted in a transparent gold area. With this area we can hold about 38 car trains and each 8 car train would accommodate 1500 passengers but we should widen it. We should widen the depot to hold more trains so that we could achieve the 2 minute frequency. I forgot to mention that the metro would have trains coming every 2 minutes at its maximum in the peak hour, transporting about 45,000 passengers per hour. Now that is the end of the line for the metro. Now for the surprise that you've been waiting for. Stay tuned. The new metro will be luggage and passenger friendly because I have plans to implement a system that would be efficient for both passengers and heavy or large belongings such as luggage. It will work by adding a luggage compartment sorry it said cargo but this is supposed to be called luggage compartment it would add a luggage compartment on the underside of the carriages. Metro systems will be built like airports where you can check in your luggage and trains could be designed like airplanes separating passengers and heavy items to maintain an efficient loading system. Implementing a system like this will give tradesmen, especially tradesmen, a sense of liberation as they can check in their tools for their commute to work. This way it would make the metro more equitable for different passengers. Here's how the metro, here's how luggage is transported onto the metro and how this system works. There'll be check-in machines in the concourse of the stations where passengers can check in heavy items. Now they look similar to ATM machines but all you have to do is give information on where you will carry your heavy belongings and pay a luggage fee with which is relatively cheap with the maximum cost of $4.50 from Parramatta to Little Bay as an example. The machine will give out a sticker with a barcode and a f with a barcode and a five digit code which will be used for when you claim your luggage. At the same time the gate will open and on the underside of the machine on the underside of the machine where you will place your belongings ready for departure place the barcode onto your belongings so that the barcode is facing right at you as you're checking in click confirm click finish and then the gates will close and then proceed onto the train where your luggage just while the luggage system takes care of the belongings for you for you Luggage will enter on the underside of the platforms where they will be loaded onto the train at the same time as the other passengers. If you've looked carefully, just we'll do that again, we'll replay. If you've looked carefully, you'll see that the luggage just went onto the train. And then the train will make its journey to any to a different to the next station. Now once the luggage has reached a predetermined destination it will get 
unloaded from the train at the same time as unloading the passengers and loading the next set of passengers. Now you get now you go to the concourse and then you claim your luggage where you get off. You go to the machine, you have to put in your five digit code that was given to you at your station of origin. It will either dispense the luggage that you checked in or it will say that your luggage is not yet ready for collection in case, in which case you wait. It is not unusual for your belongings to be loaded onto a different train from yours. In some instances, the, lo the belongings would be on the train ahead of yours or on the, train, uh, on the same train as yours or the train behind yours. Now here are some of the items required for check-in. Some of these items, such as this chainsaw here, are often carried by tradies to work. We can offer a tax deduction as paying luggage fees can take away a significant portion of your income. So I've hope, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I'm going to wrap this up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, favorite and especially share the video. I will see you next time. Goodbye for now.